Let's go to news headlines. Number one, Joe Biden was talking to Don Cheadle for some reason, and that's when he shared his true thoughts about the American people. Listen. We'll have to address these issues straight on. And the words the president says matter. So when a president stands up and divides people all the time, you're going to get the worst of us to come out, the worst in us all to come out. The president talks, constantly talks about equality without, without lecturing, talks about and has administrations that looks like the country and the rest, it changes attitudes. And it's about the attitude of the country. Do we want our kids, do we, do we really think this is as good as we can be as a nation? I don't think the vast majority of people think that. There are probably anywhere from 10 to 15% of the people out there that are just not very good people. But that's not who we are. The vast majority of the people are decent. We have to appeal to that and we have to unite people, bring them together. Bring them together. 10 to 15% are not very good people. Now, the thing is, he's right, of course. Probably way more than 15% aren't very good people. Uh, the idea that everyone in the country is fundamentally decent and good is, is silly, of course, and childish and clearly not the case. But I think, uh, now I think Biden is singling out the wrong 15%. Also, politically, of course, this is a boneheaded thing to say. There's just never a time when it's a good idea for a politician to say that any percentage of Americans aren't good or decent. There's no, there's no winning there when you say that, uh, even if it's clearly true. And by the way, if we're, if we're listing groups of people who aren't good and decent, we should obviously start with politicians, Joe Biden included. We should start there, and then, and then we can branch out from there. Number two, foxnews.com reports, Several members of the Minneapolis City Council this week have expressed support for radical changes to how the city handles law enforcement, including a move to dismantle the police department and replace it with a transformative new model for public safety. And so we're hearing about this dismantling the police, um, defunding the police. According to the Daily Wire, celebrities like Megan Rapinoe, uh, John Legend, Lizzo have signed a letter demanding that police departments be defunded. And I think that's very interesting because you've got these wealthy celebrities who live in gated communities and got personal security. And so they're good to go. They're surrounded by armed security all the time. They've got the gated community. They've got the gate around their house, the armed guards and everything. And so they're fine. What they're saying now is, yeah, get rid of the police department for these neighborhoods and, and, and these, these people who are in dangerous neighborhoods. They, they don't need it. We can get rid of it for them. They'll be fine. Very, very courageous, right? Very courageous perspective from these people. Number three, Tony Dungy's former NFL head coach, Super Bowl winner, NFL analyst now, was on a sports talk show this morning, and he was asked about the Drew Brees situation. Drew Brees, like we discussed yesterday, came out and said that people should not disrespect the flag, that a bunch of insane crybabies freaked out about it, and Drew Brees uh, apologized to them. Speaking of self-flagellating white people, Breeze basically took a knee, uh, crawled on his hands and feet and said, please forgive me, I'm not racist. Anyway, here's Tony Dungy's take on this. Who has to have those conversations, you think, Tony? Who, who, who? We all have to have them. We, and we have to have Drew Breeze saying what he said. I don't, I don't downgrade Drew for that, okay? That's what he said. He may not totally understand. It may have been uh, not exactly the way he wanted to express it, but he can't be afraid to say that. And we can't be afraid to say, okay, Drew, I don't agree with you, but let's talk about this and let's 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 sit down and talk about it. We can't just say anytime something happens that we don't agree with, hey, I'm done with that and I'm done with this person, and that doesn't make sense. Uh, we we have to be better than that. This battle is not going to be won by demonstrating and throwing bricks through windows. Uh, it's not going to be won by the the government saying, hey, we're going to bring out these weapons and dominate the streets again. That is not going to fix anything. The only notable thing about that about what D Tony Dungy said there, is that it is notable. It's, it's notable that something like that is notable these days because what he's saying is, in reality, basic common sense, obviously correct, obviously the most sensible and ethical and intelligent way of approaching this. He's saying, hey, if, if we have a difference of opinion, let's talk about it. If somebody expresses an opinion about the flag or a protest, Rather than crying and freaking out and panicking, why not talk to them and say, why do you feel that way? Let's have a discussion. And oh, by the way, don't throw bricks on people's windows. That was Tony Dungy's message. 
And it becomes this, this headline thing and it goes viral. It's all over the place because it's so rare to hear, especially on national TV, from a prominent voice to hear basic common sense. Although from Tony Dungy, it's not rare. He's a really common sense guy. Uh, big Tony Dungy fan. Um, I think everybody is. Tony Dungy is one of the few. I was asking this the other day. Can you name like, I don't know, five Americans who everybody agrees is respectable and decent and admirable? I, you know, I, I think in times past, almost all Americans could agree on a whole host of people who they consider to be sort of admirable uh, figures. But these days, things are so political and uh, ideologically divided. Everything becomes political that there's almost nobody left who everybody admires. I think Tony Dungy is one of them. Who else? Is there anybody else? Is it just Tony Dungy? There's got to be a few others, right? Alex Trebek. He's not even American. He's Canadian, right? We'll adopt him for our own. I think they shoot the show in America, so we'll, we'll call him American. Um, so Alex Trebek, Tony Dungy. Is that it? I think that's it. They're, they're, they're the only two left. Now, um, uh, four from the Daily Wire. Again, Attorney General William Barr said on Thursday that federal law enforcement officials have evidence that Antifa and other extremist groups have been involved in instigating and participating in acts of violence that have rocked the nation for days as riots have broken out following the death of George Floyd. Uh, I, I think we're, we're going to see a lot more about There's a lot more to come out about this, I think. And what I really want to know are the Democrats and high-profile people who have been you know, personally involved in communicating with Antifa and coordinating with them. I guarantee there's some of that stuff going on. And this is really important, and we need to know about it. Antifa is a domestic terrorist organization. There's no question about that. But as I've been saying all along, we cannot let this distract us from, we cannot solely scapegoat Antifa. I've got no problem with, with criticizing Antifa and call them domestic terrorist organization, arrest everybody involved in it. If they are a domestic terrorist organization, then you have no right to be involved with them. You should all be arrested. I'm all, I'm on board with that. But we, we cannot allow, here's what we really can't allow. We can't allow Black Lives Matter as an organization to scapegoat Antifa. Because Black Lives Matter and Antifa are two, two sides of the same coin. And I've been talking about this all week. There are even a lot of conservatives who seem to want to exonerate Black Lives Matter and make this all about Antifa. We cannot do it. Black Lives Matter is a, an extremist organization, has a, has a lengthy history of violence. And so this is also about them. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.